What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 13.3 beta 1 to registered developers a little over a week after the release of iOS 13.2. And along with this iOS release, Apple did also release tvOS 13.3 beta 1 and watchOS 6.1.1 beta 1. But of course, in this video, we're gonna be covering iOS 13.3 and iPadOS 13.3 beta one. So as always, we're going to be running through all of the new features and changes in this software update. We'll talk about the performance, the battery life as well, along with a follow-up review of iOS 13.2 and how it was running for me over the past week plus, and also how it's been performing for you guys. So there's a good bit to cover in this update. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. So first of all, you can see the size of this update here was pretty large coming from iOS 13.2 on my iPhone 11 here. We were at 3.51 gigabytes going from 13.2 to 13.3 beta one. And like always, that size will vary depending on your device and what firmware you're coming from. Now, if we go into our settings and check out the build number to general about, you can see there 13.3, tap on that. You can see the build number there for this first beta, 17C503, to D. So we do have a D at the end there, obviously indicating that we do have quite a few betas of iOS 13.3 to go, which of course it is the first beta. So that is expected. I would also expect to see probably a 0.2.1 release before the final release of iOS 13.3, but we'll touch on that much later on down the road. Now, as far as the modem firmware, we did see a nice upgrade here. We went from 1.02.14 to 1.03.04, and that is for the 2019 iPhones. So if you're having connectivity issues, any kind of drop calls or anything like that, you could see a fix here with iOS 13.3 or at least a little improvement in this update. So now what's new in iOS 13.3 beta one? And the very first thing, the biggest feature in 13.3 is going to be communications limits inside of the screen time settings right here. So if you go to our screen time settings right here, you will see a new tab there, and that is for communication limits. And when you tap on that, you will see you do have some settings to change in here. And this is going to be a great feature for those of you with kids, and you want to monitor and kind of just restrict them for making late night phone calls or text messages during the weekdays or whatever rules you have set in place. So you can read there, it says limits apply to phone, FaceTime messages, and iCloud contacts. Calls to known emergency numbers are always allowed and will turn off communication limits for 24 hours. So the first thing you can change here is the allowed communications. And if you go ahead and tap on that, you can have this set to allowed communication for everyone or contacts only. You can also do group communication down here. And then if we go down, we have during downtime right here. And this is where we can limit the communication to either everyone or specific contacts. So again, this is a great feature for those of you with kids who want to limit the communication on their phones at certain times of the day or on specific days. But other than for that reason, I don't really see this being very useful for anybody else unless you just really needed to limit your own personal usage. Uh, but anyways, let's move on to the next change here in iOS 13.3. And the next one is a very big one, one that I've been hoping we would see since iOS 13.0 beta one, and that is the ability to disable the Memoji stickers inside of the keyboard. So you guys know when you're texting somebody or something like that, and you press the emoji buttons, and you always see these ugly Memojis here that you probably never really use. You really just wanna use the emojis, and you probably wish that you could remove those Memojis. Well now, in iOS 13.3, you can. So if you go to your settings, go to general, and then go down to keyboard, and then scroll all the way to the bottom, you will see a new toggle there for Memoji stickers. And if we go ahead and turn that off, and then go back over to our keyboard, you can see here we go all the way over to the left, and we no longer have those Memojis right there. It's just all emojis like we probably all want in iOS 13. This next change is a pretty small one, but you will see that we have a new watch icon. The app for the watch application has now changed in iOS 13.3. We have 13.2 here on the left-hand side, 13.3 on the right. You can see it used to be just a real, just dark black circle on the side, but now we have kind of a gray ring indicating like a Apple Watch Series 4 or Series 5 instead of like a Series 1 over here on previous versions of iOS. Another nice change here in iOS 13.3 beta one is that the AirPods Pro now actually show up as the AirPods Pro model in the Find My application. And iOS 13.2, I just showed a regular set of AirPods, but now it's changed to the AirPods Pro 
model and that reflects in the Find My application. Now, as far as AirPods Pro controls or any kind of new toggles inside of the settings for the AirPods Pro, unfortunately, I don't see anything new here in iOS 13.3 compared to 13.2. Hopefully with future updates, we do see more options and more customizability for the AirPods Pro. Now, if you guys spent any significant amount of time with iOS 13.2 over the past week, you would know that there is a pretty major issue with RAM management. So what I mean by that is if you went into like Safari or YouTube, and then you went out of it and went into another application or another couple applications, the next time you went back into Safari or YouTube, it would reload and it would kind of just forget where you left off at. It would restart instead of keeping everything in memory. So for instance, if I was watching a YouTube video and I want to type a text message or take a phone call, when I went back into the YouTube application, that video wouldn't even be playing anymore. I would have to literally search for it again and I would go find it and go back to where I was in that video. It was super annoying, but luckily in iOS 13.3, it does seem to be better. I don't think that it's perfect yet. I don't think that it's fully fixed yet, but from my initial testing over the past 30 minutes or so, it has definitely improved in iOS 13.3. And hopefully this is a sign of things to come because this is just the first beta. Hopefully it gets better just in iOS 13.3 itself. But in the first beta, it does seem to be improved just a little bit. So we're gonna test it out live on video here. So I'm in ESPN right now. Imagine I was just reading this article and I was like right here in the article. Let's just say I was like right here on this picture right here. So we're gonna go out and we're gonna open up a few other applications and then we're gonna go right back into Safari and see if we could pick up where we left off. So we're gonna watch some videos, check emails, things like that, and then go right back into Safari. So here we go, let's go right back in, and you can see it doesn't reload. So in iOS 13.2, there's a good chance that it would have reloaded there. So in iOS 13.3, it definitely seems to be better in terms of the RAM management, and this goes across all devices. I did also test this on my iPad Pro here, my 2018 iPad Pro. So that is great news for those of you who complained about the RAM management issues in iOS 13.2. It's definitely a valid complaint as well, and I'm sure Apple heard all of us loud and clear. And that's why they started addressing it here with iOS 13.3 beta one. But in terms of opening up a lot of applications and just going back to see if it's where you left off, I do notice that RAM management in that case is definitely improved here in iOS 13.3 beta one as well. So it seems that RAM management in general has just been slightly improved here with iOS 13.3. Again, I don't think it's perfect. I don't think it's fully fixed yet. I don't think this is as good as it can be, but it's good that Apple is at least addressing it in this first beta. Now, as far as iOS 13.2 in general, after using it for about a week or two, I didn't really have a ton of major issues. I mean, the RAM management thing was quite a big issue, but other than that, I didn't really have too many things going on. Now, I did have some issues with the Twitter application. The Twitter application was quite buggy for me on iOS 13.2. And matter of fact, let's go into Twitter and I wanna read what you guys said about iOS 13.2. All right, so let me take this out of dark mode so you can see the screen better. So I made this tweet earlier today. I said, apparently I'm the only one not having issues on iOS 13.2. Are you having any performance or battery related issues? And here's what you guys had to say. I'm gonna pick a few tweets here and read these out. If you're not following me on Twitter, of course, go ahead and follow me over there. I do say things like this sometimes. I do ask you guys questions sometimes and then read your responses on these videos. And aside from the RAM management issues, I noticed that a lot of people said they had bad battery life in iOS 13.2. Now for me, battery life in iOS 13.2 was perfect. It was perfectly fine on my iPhone 11 Pro Max, which I use every single day, my iPhone 11, which I also use every day, my iPad Pro 2018, also use that every day, and even the iPhone 6S, was decent. I mean, the battery life isn't great on the iPhone 6S in general, but it was still decent. It was still sufficient and it wasn't terrible. It didn't drain a lot. So I do see quite a few people talking about battery drain issues. And I would really just suggest you guys that have battery issues to watch my battery saving tips video for iOS 13, because that's not usual for your battery to drain so quickly on, especially the newer devices. Like I saw people saying that it happened to them on the iPhone 10 R and even the iPhone 11 in some cases. Someone here has an iPhone 11 pro and they're kind of worried about their battery health going down to 99% after only five weeks of usage. And it never dropped below 100% when they had the iPhone 10s max that they owned for a year. So I wouldn't be too worried about the battery health. That's not really super accurate when it shows that percentage in there until it gets down past like 90%. I would not really worry. I wouldn't really put too much stock into that. You can see someone here complaining about the battery life and that got 10 likes. So a lot of people agreeing with bad battery life right there. Ninja Panda here with the 11 Pro was on 100% this morning at 8.30 before I started work. It's now 15.45 and I'm on 85% 
had over one hour of screen on time during dinner and breaks plus usage through the day battery is amazing so this is kind of a flip side of it also people are having great battery life as well on 13.2 and as for the 11 pro you can see here travis said battery issues no weird glitches yes so i asked what kind of glitches because a lot of people have different things and he said one time i turned off my phone and the power button wouldn't let it come back on i had to put it on a wireless charger to bring it back i've had several lockups on apps randomly and frequently when i tried to click on iMessage it doesn't take and says space when i click it and he said it only started happening with ios 13.2 so if you guys had any of those issues, let me know down in a comment below. I don't think I've heard of these happening, but that's why I like to ask you guys as well to kind of see what kind of issues are going on with your devices. And then I just wanted to show you one final response here from Oliver. He said, when airplane mode is activated for a certain period of time, the airplane icon will stay in the status bar. That used to be a bug back in the day. I don't think I've seen that on 13.2. I thought it was fixed but apparently not. If you're having that issue, let me know. He also said sometimes when you take a screenshot and crop it, it won't save the changes when it goes to your camera roll. That's definitely an issue I've seen quite a few times. Hopefully Apple does fix that. He also said problems when you set new wallpapers, the colors look opaque. And they said these errors are from the beginning of betas and still present in iOS 13.2 on the iPhone 7 Plus. So if you guys had any of those issues that I mentioned, those people over on Twitter had, let me know down in the comment section below. I'm really just trying to see how widespread some of these issues are, how popular some of these issues are. But as far as for me on iOS 13.2 in terms of performance and battery life, everything has been pretty good overall. Again, some applications did hang up for me, first and third party applications in iOS 13.2 would sometimes hang, especially the notes application for some reason when I created a new note and I started to type it would just really lag behind and I wouldn't be able to type for like a good five seconds and that was with a first party application it did also happen in Twitter like I said the latest Twitter update really messed up Twitter for me sometimes the tweets wouldn't load and I actually took a screen recording of another issue I had with the Twitter application here in iOS 13.2 you can see when I click to see who's following me or who liked a tweet it shows right here you can see right here it just shows up as blank you can see there I'm trying to refresh and show, but nothing is happening. It's just pretty buggy on 13.2. And again, I think that's just the latest Twitter update. That's the culprit there for that issue, but it is something I did want to mention. But aside from that, everything was fine for me on iOS 13.2. And I would assume that iOS 13.3 is going to be pretty much exactly the same in terms of performance and battery life as 13.2, but with the fix of the RAM management issues on 13.2 so with that being said 13.3 in theory should just run a lot better than ios 13.2 especially when the final release comes out the first beta is definitely going to be an improvement because of the ram management fixes and i haven't had time to use ios 13.3 under load to see if it hangs up on certain applications and things like that so i don't know about that just yet of course stay tuned for my follow-up video where i will tell you guys more about the software and how it's been treating me after a few days i'll probably have that coming out later this week close to the weekend or early next week but definitely the biggest change here in 13.3 is the ability to remove the emojis from the keyboard that's my favorite feature right there that's one reason to upgrade alone that alone and the ram management issues makes this a pretty easy upgrade if you don't care about jailbreaking and you don't care about running a beta software on your daily driver and that's another question I get quite often is should you run a beta software on your daily driver device so I have my iPhone 11 Pro Max here that I use as my daily driver and I do personally use beta software on it because if you think about it we're on a 0.3 release we're pretty well into iOS 13 at this point and there's not really gonna be too many issues that really break your experience of iOS. You're not gonna have like, you know, you can't make phone calls or something like that. You're not gonna have any major issues at this point. So I think it's pretty safe. Uh, again, I would probably still avoid the first beta of every single software release just because I would probably not load a beta onto your daily driver until the second beta but there's really not too much risk at this stage in the game but yeah guys that's pretty much it for ios 13.3 beta 1 as far as the ipad goes ipad os 13.3 beta 1 i didn't notice any other changes that aren't in ios 13.3 beta 1 i will be testing that out a little bit further later on this week as well and i will talk about that in my follow-up video coming out later on this week so stay tuned for that but other than that, that is iOS 13.3. Let me know if you guys found anything else new or changed in iOS 13.3. Of course, let me know if you've had RAM management issues, if your RAM management issues are fixed in this update, if they're still present. Let me know your whole experience with this software update down in the comment section below. You guys know I love responding to you guys down there and I take all of your comments in so I know, you know what's going on with your phone. So I can talk about that in my next video. So don't be shy. Tell me what's going on with your device, what you like, what you don't like, 
all that fun stuff. And if you guys enjoyed this video and all my iOS update videos, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and of course subscribe so you don't miss the next iOS update video. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.